Yo, what is up guys? It is Bumfries, back with another episode of Entitled Parents. Today's episode is an absolute banger and I know you're gonna love this one. As always, here's a chance to earn 7,258 Bumfries points. All you have to do is leave a like on the video below and those Bumfries points are all yours. Like I say, they're kind of useless, but hey, a reward's a reward. If you're new, don't forget to subscribe, then sit back, relax, and get annoyed at some Entitled Parents. This story takes place during the week that my wife and I got married. I was 28 at the time and we had a destination wedding in the Bahamas and it was amazing. We had 15 people that were able to join us. We had picked the Bahamas as it was the first place that my wife and I ever did a vacation to and it's where I proposed to her as well. So for us, the week was pure magic. Now onto the story of my mother. I would write about her antics during the whole week, but I don't think people want to read a book so I'll only talk about the wedding day itself. It's Wednesday and the middle of our trip. Both me and my wife wanted to follow the don't see each other before the wedding rule. We'd gotten some flack for it, but whatever. We were getting married off the resort in a small blue church in a nature sanctuary. I was to go first and my wife would follow. While waiting on the rides for me, my best man and our guests, my mum kept saying things like, it's Italian tradition for the mother to take photos with the groom before the wedding. It's Italian tradition for the mother to take photos with the best man and guests. This was getting annoying, but then my mother pulls me aside and starts to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with me, which I thought was going to go one way. It was basically a lecture about how important she is and how selfish I was. She ended it with saying, it's also Italian tradition to wear these cufflinks. I was expecting cufflinks that my grandpa wore at his wedding. I respect him greatly as he was a huge influence in my life, but she pulls out these dollar store cufflinks and kept trying to pass them off as a family heirloom. I later found out that she'd brought them in the Bahamas as an impulse buy. Also, my suit wasn't made with cufflinks in mind. Anyway, as the rides show up, my mother tells me, oh, don't forget, it's Italian tradition for the mother to walk the son down the aisle. Everyone looked at her like she was crazy because even my dumb ass knows that that's not a tradition anywhere. I call her out on that and she starts arguing with me. She sort of relents and tells me, well, if you're going to break your mother's heart, at least follow the Italian tradition of making your brother the usher. I told her that like only six people were coming with me, but fine, whatever. We finally leave with my mother staying behind to stay with the bride's side. Lord knows what crap she tried to pull with her. We get to the nature sanctuary and go to the small blue church that can hold maybe 40 people. Everyone just sits where they want and my brother stands by the door. Now, my wife's maid of honor is her best friend and she's a sickening, amazing person. Honestly, she's probably the most selfless person on the planet. However, her only flaw is that she is very loud. I bring that up because when my wife and everyone with her pull up, you can hear her maid of honor and the distance between us is large. I perk up and get ready when my brother, who is still standing by the door says, I'm gonna go have a smoke and explore the park. And I tell him, we just heard them pull up, no? He tries arguing with me, but finally just shuts up and gives me a dirty look for the rest of the day. The place is huge and maze-like. The other guests show up and everyone gets in their seats. We didn't care who sat where and we started the wedding and I see my soon-to-be wife as a bride come around the corner. My heart stops and I realize that this is the best moment in my life. Everyone else apparently knew what I was thinking because I had a smile that went from ear to ear. Honestly, the two seconds of her coming around the corner made all of my stresses vanish. My wife looked at me and gave me a huge smile as well. Seeing her walk down the aisle is a memory that I replay in my head all the time. The wedding goes great. We do our vows and I can hear my best man crying behind me. After the ceremony, my mother is back into Italian tradition mode. It's Italian tradition for the mother to have a photo with the groom. It's Italian tradition for the mother to XYZ. If I were to type out everything that was Italian tradition, no one would read this. Later, when we got our photos back, my mother had this scowl in her face the entire time. There's one that's my favorite because it's during the whole, do you take OP to B part? And she had this look of like pure disgust and hatred. It is great. So we get back to the resort and we have our reception. I think that's what it's called. I'm just an idiot and forget. And my mother tries to start it out by saying, it's Italian tradition for the mother of the groom to do three speeches. My best man wasn't having that and put his foot down on who does a speech. He kicked ass at keeping her insanity in control during the week. Everyone does their speeches and my now in-laws do theirs and hand us a card. In it, it says, when we get home, we will give you $1,000 as a wedding present. Awesome. My mother tried a few more Italian traditions. One was about her cutting the cake. Several were about her and various photos with people. And the cap to the night after dinner was my mother walking up to me and my now wife and says to her, how much did your parents give you? And she was like, huh? And my mother goes, well, it's Italian tradition for the groom's parents to give double of the parent's bride. 
We paused in confusion and told her that they haven't given us anything yet, but they will give us $1,000 when we get home. My mother goes, good, I'll give you $3,000 then, and we're like, okay. Spoiler, my mother never gave us a single penny. It's been four years since our wedding, and my mother tells people that she paid for everything. The wedding, my suit, my wife's dress, which her grandmother with dementia bought it for her, so that really pisses off my wife. All 17 people's airfares, counting my wife and I, hotel, wedding ceremony, and so much more. The only thing she paid for was her and my brother's trip. And the only reason my brother came was because it was a free vacation for him. And I'll end it with this fun fact. I'm half Italian, but have never once in my life done anything Italian or have acknowledged my Italian half. My wife and I also don't care about tradition. She is Polish. I'm half Italian, half Irish, and we got married in a Christian Bahamian church. What's also funny is that my mother refuses to call my wife by her name. She just says your wife in a snide tone. It's a how are you and your wife kind of thing. So yeah, that's my Italian tradition wedding. And yes, I've cut that toxic woman out of my life. I feel like a lot of the entitled parents stories that I've been reading out lately involve people whose entitled parents are actually their own parents and nothing makes me more sad than that. I mean, putting that completely aside, if you grew up in a non-traditional way and then when it comes to your wedding day, your mother tries to completely ruin it by bringing up all these ridiculous Italian traditions which, to the best of my knowledge and from what I gather from this story, don't actually exist, then all your mother's really trying to do is ruin your day for absolutely no good reason. Not that there is a good reason to try and ruin someone's wedding day anyway, but this mother is something else. My friends and I bought tickets to a concert featuring a lot of cool artists. We couldn't believe it was only $35. Mind you that the main artist is a former child star from Disney and the concert was full of young teens and a lot of them were with their parents. Kind of lame we thought, but okay. We were determined to enjoy the concert. Fast forward after all the opening acts were over, the child star comes out and it's actually quite exciting. She sings pop songs, big surprise, and a lot of them are big hits. We are having fun and dancing and letting our inner teen out, and it was a great time. Then comes the entitled mum. She taps me on the shoulder and asks me to stop dancing all over her son. Mind you that this kid was a 12 year old that had obviously not stepped a single toe into puberty yet. He just seemed confused. I was in a foreign country and English is my second language. I couldn't even think what to say, so I just said, sorry, I didn't see him. I told my friend what happened then and there and she was super protective, so she grabbed me and put me on the other side of her. Now, she's next to the entitled mum's kid. We carried on like nothing had happened and kept on dancing. Mind you, we weren't swinging our arms profusely or twerking or anything that could either hit people around us or be considered inappropriate for a children's concert. The entitled mum though started complaining at my friend, this time being passive aggressive and rude to her son. She was so effing bothered that we were having a good time that she was taking it out on the poor kid. She kept saying, careful not to let them touch you super loud, almost in our ears, all while grabbing him aggressively to move him a bit. She finally confronted us again, but this time she was talking to my friend. Now, my friend's English was way better than mine, and she is not a people pleaser like me. She went on to say that we weren't touching the entitled mum's son, and we weren't doing anything wrong. The entitled mum asked us to move, and my friend said that we weren't moving. The entitled mum proceeded to say, if you don't move, I'll knock you over. My friend and I went to find security, because at this point, the entitled mum threatened us and wasn't leaving us alone. We walked the security guard to the entitled mum and her kid, and she talked to him. We couldn't hear anything because, well, it was a concert and it was loud AF, which makes the whole confrontation from earlier even more cringy. And then the security guard asked my friend and I to move. When I looked at the entitled mum, she had a gross smirk on her face. That was the end of it. It wasn't a happy ending with the entitled mum getting what she deserved, but I'm sure that she will if she keeps up with that attitude. I could be completely mistaken with this, but what I think really happened is this entitled mum was just having a crap time, probably didn't realize this was going to be a really awful kids concert, and she just decided that she was going to take her anger out on some random people that were actually enjoying themselves. Either that or she's just a really overprotective next level mum, but I mean, if you're that overprotective, why are you taking your kid to a concert where they could face these kinds of situations in the first place? Regardless of what the situation really is, this entitled mum seems like a piece of work. So where do I start? This event happened only hours ago. I was riding on the bus to return home from work. It's a fairly half hour ride and most of the time I'm on my phone, listening to some music while scrolling through Reddit or playing games. Today I decided to just listen to music and have a snack. I always carry croissants in my bag with strawberry jelly and butter. No more than two minutes after I got my croissant out of my bag, I feel a tap on the back of my shoulder. I turn around and who do I see? 
the Mad Titan Karen and her little spawn. The conversation went something like this. I said, yes. The entitled mum says, excuse me, young man, but do you think my son can have that? And points at my croissant. He hasn't eaten anything all day and I've been too busy to get him some food. I say to her, sorry, but this is the only one I got. And the entitled mum cuts me off and says, don't make it such a big deal. It's only a dumb croissant. I'm sure you have more in your bag. I can see from here that it's full with stuff. I say back to her, maybe I do, maybe I don't. Either way, it's not really your business. Now please leave me alone. The entitled kid then goes, mommy, you said that I can have a croissant. And she says, yes, honey, but this mean person won't give you a croissant. Turns on me and says, see, you're making my baby sad. Give him the croissant now. I tell her, no, I'm not going to give your kid my snack and don't blame this on me. It's your bad parenting that you should be blaming. Teaching your child to take food from strangers? Who in their right mind does that? The entitled mom says back, how dare you talk to me like that? You know I'm old enough to be your mother. Now give me that. The entitled mom then tries to grab either my croissant or my bag off my hands. She probably thought I had more in it, which I didn't. But with that act in place, I pushed the entitled mom away from me and she fell on the bus floor. She then started yelling that I assaulted her and that she's gonna sue me. The bus stops and the driver hopped off his seat and stormed on our way. And you could tell that he was not happy. The bus driver comes over and says, what the hell is going on? The entitled mom says, he assaulted me. Please call the police. This man is crazy. I say, you assaulted me first and I just defended myself. And he says, yeah, cut the crap. I saw you from the camera as bus drivers in my country have installed security cameras so that they can see what's going on in their bus from a little monitor at the driving seat. The entitled mum says, but, but, and the bus driver responds, get off my bus before I call the cops on you. The entitled mum grabbed her kid who is now crying and throwing a tantrum and left the bus. The bus driver asked if I'm okay and I told him yes and he made a joke of how crazy that woman was to me and laughed. What a nice guy. While a story like this isn't exact revenge on an entitled parent, at least there's some level of justice that's done to her so that she doesn't just get away with her entitled actions. There seem to be so many entitled parent stories out there where they think that they or their children are entitled to somebody else's belongings and for whatever reason, they won't stop at anything to get it. These are the types of entitled parents that I'll just never understand. So I get the train every day to school with some of my friends. In the part of England where I live, the train company puts up these stickers everywhere saying that this area is a quiet zone. And I mean everywhere, like on the windows, seats, tables, etc. So anyway, me and my friends are sitting on a table, not making that much noise. We're not silent by any means, but not disruptive. Just talking and playing games on our phones. We're sitting there talking for about five minutes before this woman with a young kid who was about four or five says to us in that kind of whiny voice, um, excuse me, this is a quiet zone. Could you please stop being so noisy? My friends and I just kind of accept it because we don't want to start an argument, but we're pretty pissed off at her. So we sit there pretty much in silence for a few minutes, but then her kid asks for a packet of crisps or something and she says no. And this kid obviously inherited his mother's entitlement because he has an effing meltdown. While he's there kicking and screaming, I just say to her in the calmest voice I can, excuse me, could you control your kid? This is a quiet zone. I didn't say it condescendingly, more as a joke. But then this woman goes full Karen. She says, excuse me, I am a mother. Any of you are just a bunch of teenagers. My kid is allowed to be noisy. He is only five. I know it's not as crazy as a lot of the stories on here, but my friends and I just thought it was pretty hypocritical. A story like this, while like the OP said, isn't actually that bad, is still just as annoying as a lot of other entitled parents stories. Like what the entitled mum said is a little bit fair enough. And even though you probably should have some degree of control over your kid by that age, I get it. They can be hard to control and they can be noisy. But you yourself complain that you were in the quiet zone and other people were being noisy. If you know you can't control your kid and you know that he's going to be noisy, take him somewhere where that's okay. Don't hang around in a zone that isn't appropriate for your child, especially if you're going to complain about other people doing exactly what your child's doing. All right, everyone, that is that for today's episode of Entitled Parents. I just wanna start off by saying thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've stuck around this long and did enjoy the video, don't forget to smash the like button below. And if you're a newbie to the channel and you like my stuff, don't forget to subscribe. That aside, I hope you guys have been enjoying the frequency that I've been uploading videos of late. 
I've absolutely tried to commit to making a video every single day for as long as I can for you guys, because I know that it can be difficult if you're stuck at home, and I want to try and provide you guys with a little bit of entertainment if that's the case. Also, for those of you that are interested, I'm probably looking at a different subreddit tomorrow, maybe Pro Revenge or Petty Revenge, something along those lines. I've also been tossing things up like nice guys and nice girls, but throwing those in the mix there, as well as some choosing beggars and entitled parents, is probably what it's going to look like in the near future. But I don't want to drag this outro out too much, so I am going to wrap things up there. On your screen right now, what you will see are two awesome videos of mine, one of which I would highly suggest you clicking on to cure your boredom. You can click on one of those and I promise you will not be disappointed. Otherwise, I just want to say again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another video. Bye.